Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Felix, and I'm a member of the CK12 team. And my colleague Carl and I will be running today's webinar, um, Strategies from Using CK12. And we're so glad you've joined us. Um, so many of you are joining us today, are participating in the Certified Educator Program, uh, CEP for short. Welcome back. Um, if you're a brand new to the, the Certified Educator Program and would like to learn more and officially register with us, you can visit um, www.ck12.org slash certified and press register to get started. As a note, that recently revamped program includes four components. It's two on-demand sessions, three core live webinars, matching assignments, and a final form requesting your certificate. Since this session counts as one of the core live sessions, you'll already be a third away through that requirement at the end of this hour. At the end of today's webinar, we can discuss more about the Certified Educator Program for any participants with questions. Or you can type any question in the Q&A window um, for Star, who's also joining us in this webinar, to answer privately. All right. So now let's make sure everyone is comfortable with the Zoom webinar platform. You should see two different options on your Zoom screen, one for Q&A and one for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please post it in the Q&A window. The chat window is a place for community conversation. Um, as you guys have already started, we'd love for you all to introduce yourselves. Um, if you're an educator, feel free to share where you live and the subject you teach. Just make sure in the chat window that you're sending general posts to all panelists and attendees and not just to CK12 or the panelists. Um, also, while we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you're having any trouble with your video or sound, please let us know in the Q&A or the chat window. One additional thing I'd like to point out is that we have two resource pages you might find helpful for this session. Uh, the first is a general strategies page. The second covers the SIMS and PLIC strategies we'll be including in today's webinar. You can find them at the tiny URLs listed on the screen. Uh, it'd be tinyurl.com slash ck12strategies2019 and tinyurl.com slash ck 12 clicksims 2019. We'll also put the links for today's resources in the chat window right now. You're welcome to print these resource pages or simply keep them as a reference for a later date. With that, let's move into today's content. With our Flexbook 2.0 platform, you have the tools and resources all in one place to plan and customize, deliver and di differentiate, and assess and remediate. With that in mind, we'll be covering strategies within each of these, those areas. Lessons and homework. We'll talk about designing your class, classes and assignments using CK12 resources as supplemental or core curriculum. Ways to customize CK12 to meet your needs and integrating related content throughout your flexbooks and lessons. Difference, differentiation and support for, for learning. Then we'll go into ways to differentiate and support learning at all levels using CK12 classes, innate components of our offerings and literacy tools. And assessment and remediation. We'll wrap up with ways to use CK12 to assess learning, monitor progress, and remediate when needed. Our main goal is that by the end of this session, you come away with the specific and actionable strategies you can immediately use immediately to engage your students using CK12 resources. But before we get into the core content of the webinar, it would be great if we found out a little bit more about your previous experience using CK12 resources. You'll see a poll here in a few seconds that will ask about your previous use of different CK12 resources and what your plans are for the future. Please click all that apply for both questions.
And I'll pause for a few seconds to let you finish answering this poll. Okay, um, that's great. Let's take a look at the results. Okay, so, sorry, one second. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and move on here. So next, we're going to go ahead and talk about lessons and homework. And with that, let me pass this over to Carl to talk about planning for and creating learning opportunities during class time and through homework. Thanks so much, Felix. And we also want to welcome Felix back into our um, CK12 studios here. We haven't actually seen him at a webinar in quite a few months, so we're glad to have you back with us today. And as always, we have Star answering your questions throughout. So our whole team is assembled here, and we hope to get you a lot of great information. Um, so whether you plan to use CK12 to replace your current curriculum, or you're looking for additional resources to supplement your existing set, I'll discuss strategies for finding resources and tailing, tailoring what CK12 offers to meet your needs. Following that, we'll discuss using CK12 within a class or as assignments. The first strategy is actually the most powerful and can be completed in no time at all. Create a Flexbook 2.0 matching your scope and sequence. You'll start by choosing one of the existing math or science Flexbook 2.0. Then you'll change the order of the chapters and even the lessons to match the order that you teach them in. You can even add in additional chapters and lessons or remove the ones you don't need. We've had many teachers make their own customized Flexbook 2.0 in just a couple of hours and up to a day. Then you can continue to improve your Flexbook 2.0 throughout the year. Meanwhile, along the way, each of your students will be experiencing our intelligent platform providing personalized learning. If you want to add or adjust resources for a particular lesson, you can start with the related content that has already been chosen and curated for each of our Math 2.0 and Science Flexbooks, and then quickly remove the ones that you don't want to include or add in existing modalities for learning. This is a great way to have additional resources easily available for student learning, which can be referenced in assignments or simply be there as needed. So with Swap Adaptive Practice and with a custom quiz, you can go further and customize practice the students see with a lesson. You can even customize the existing practice into what we call a quiz. And then swap out the practice with that quiz. Alternatively, you can leave the practice that's there and assign the quiz separately once they've done some initial practice. The quiz option is especially helpful if any of you, for any of you that might be teaching outside the math or science area, as you can create your own questions in a quiz and then tie them to a lesson on the Flexbook 2.0 platform. Once the quiz is attached, you'll assign both the lesson and quiz in one shot. And this is especially good, like we've just said, if you're doing like a world history book and CK12 doesn't have any questions for world history. So you might have some reading comprehension questions or some thought questions that you want to include as part of the lessons to see if the students have really learned what you were you know, wanting them to learn. And it's really easy then to actually create those questions on CK12 and then attach them to this lesson. And then remember, when you assign this lesson, 
not only does the lesson get assigned, but also the practice comes with it. Up next is enhanced lessons with interactives and questions. And this is where CK12 shines. Throughout our math and science content, you'll see a variety of media and interactive included in the lessons. This ranges from videos of science experiments to embedded simulations in Plix Interactives to inline questions directly in our newest Math Flexbook. So if you're teaching math or science, we recommend you start with a 2.0 lesson as those will be the most interactive of anything on CK12. But you can also adjust the lesson to include your own videos, incorporate additional Plix or Sims, or create questions and use them within a lesson as students learn a new concept. And we'll show you more about the inline questions in a little bit. But the key thing is CK12 lessons are really interesting and engaging because of the interactivity involved. No longer will your students just be sitting there and passively reading text. One of the most exciting things that you could do is you should consider localizing your content like this district in Tennessee did by including a picture of Dustin Lynch, a graduate from their district who then performed at the Grand Old Opry. So we also encourage you to get your students involved in this process too. Have them contribute images or artwork that they have made that relates to the content in the lesson. Have them collect data on local ecosystem and use that as example data for future classes. Split up topics and have them make review videos that can be included in future books to help students learn from those topics. Another thing you might do is have them make a little video of a lab that you're doing. And for the students who weren't in class, you can include the students' videos. And this is content made by students for other students to help them understand what the lab was about. Finally, you can have them create their own inline questions and feedback that you can incorporate into this lesson. So there's so many ways to make your content localized to be the best possible content for your students. Remember, none of this has to happen overnight. The first strategy is always match the, the book to your scope and sequence. And then over time, you can do all of these great ideas. So one of the things that we encourage you to do too is think outside the box with Flexbooks and Sims. For example, one science teacher who is also coaches lacrosse used a Flexbook structure to create a resource book with the drills and fundamentals, including text and videos to help his team learn and practice. While our simulations cover chemistry, physics, earth, and space, and physical science standards, you can use various ones in other classes. So for example, a water fountain sim can be used in a pre-calculus class when talking about parametric equations. Or at the crossroads sim can be used, can be a starting point to discuss trade. Even better, team up with a colleague across disciplines and create a lesson that spans both subject areas and helps students see the relevance of one subject in another class. For those of you needing to plan around Math Common Core, you can find our standards browser very useful. As a teacher, you can find it under the Explore menu on the um, homepage. Once on the Common Core page, you can click on Concepts and see the CK12 concepts that relate to each core standard. Or better yet, you could pick the Flexbook option, and that would take you to our newest math Flexbooks that are not only covered in the content standard, but are designed with the Common Core philosophy in mind. So they're fully interactive and engaging activities to help students construct knowledge. If you do use the concept correlation, you might find it useful to search for a matching concept within the 2.0 Flexbook to see the latest resources on that topic. For science teachers, you can use our matching NGSS browser that will correlate the NGSS disciplinary core ideas with matching concepts on CK12. As these take you to the concept pages with a variety of individual resources, you may want to search within a Flexbook 2.0 to find the matching content with all the benefits and insights of the newer platform. 
In addition to our standards browser for NGSS, you can address other aspects of the standards with CK12. For example, our opening question for SIMS, such as these examples. Why do trips to Mars happen only during certain launch windows? Why do diamonds sparkle? How does a capacitative touch screen work? And finally, how efficient is a wind turbine? These are all great places to start and address phenomena as part of your curriculum. As I just mentioned, our NGSS and our Common Core browsers link to our full concept pages. A great, great way to offer CK12 resources is to share the URL to a CK12 concept page or the similar URL to a CK12 Flexbook 2.0 start page. The big difference is the concept page offers a broad view of that concept, often spanning many grades. While this is useful for struggling or advanced students, the Flexbook 2.0 start page for that concept is often a better place to start since it focuses on the concept of the content for that specific course. Then using the artificial intelligence of two point, Flexbook 2.0, all students, including those struggling and advanced, get a personalized journey in the new platform. Simply look through the table of contents of any Flexbook 2.0 to find the start pages of concepts you cover. If you're looking for progress report, be sure to assign these 2.0 lessons or individual modalities in order to get feedback about your students' progress. Twitter is an excellent way to help you get and find new content. It is wonderful in, in combating teacher isolation because you're connected with all these great teachers and educators across the world. And when you start finding educators that, that you like, you'll see that you're learning great teaching practices from them. And you'll be hearing from leading experts in your subject area who are out there and really trying to make a difference. So first and foremost, I encourage you to set up a Twitter account and just be a lurker. Just go in there and see what's out there. And of course, the first thing I'm going to do is ask you to follow at ck12foundation.com. You'll find that in our Twitter feed, we have a lot of great information that we think you'll need and be able to use. But some other great teacher resources that you might also want to follow are hashtag blended learning, hashtag personalized learning. OER. The Go Open movement is one that has brought so much wonderful open content to teachers around the world. 21st century skills, ed tech, math, SciChat, and STEM are just really good things that you can follow to, to find educators that are really at the leading edge of what's going on out there. And then when you become more comfortable, we'd love you to start posting what works in your classroom. And that, of course, includes like CK12. If your students are doing really well with adaptive practice, please post there, tag CK12, and talk about what works. Because the best thing that you can do is go out and share what your best practices are. And often we know those include using CK12. So another teaching strategy for you is assign a Flexbook 2.0 lesson. While assignments of Flexbook 2.0 lessons are many teachers start using CK12 as a supplement to their existing curriculum. It can serve as a great resource supporting different ways of learning um, the content that they are teaching. Let's say you're teaching linear equations and distributive property and you use engaged New York materials that your district gave you. You can actually assign that concept of linear equations and distributive property using the corresponding lesson on the, CK, on the Flexbook 2.0 platform. Then students can explore that concept using a variety of modalities, including all of our great interactives, and then they can fill in their gaps using adaptive practice at the bottom of the lesson. This is all while supplementing the great content from our friends Engage New York. You as the teacher and also your students will get valuable feedback on their performance on this concept. So it's a win-win, even if you're using another curriculum. So 
another teaching strategy that we'd like to share is adaptive practices homework. So we know that those, peer, those um, worksheets that we get from the large publishers um, don't exactly work for most of our students. If the student's struggling, they can't do any of the problems. And if the student already knows it, it's a waste of time to do 50 questions on that. So the wonderful thing about CK-12 adaptive practice is that it's adaptive. It is the epitome of personalized learning. So you might want to assign adaptive practice every night, or maybe you give them five or six or 10 to do for the week, and they're due on Friday. One of the things the students love is they love being able to answer the questions and complete the adaptive practice on their phone. So they do it while in translate or uh, transit rather, or they do it, you know, whenever they have a moment. And if they have a Chromebook, they can use the Chromebook as reference while they're answering the questions on their phone. And it's all part of the same system. But the good thing is you'll get valuable information based on what they're doing. And when the students struggle, the adaptive practice doesn't just offer, offer the opportunity to practice, but it also fills in the gaps. And when the student struggles, it pauses their work. And it says, hey, Felix, I see that you're struggling here. Why don't you try doing this video or this interactive and we'll get you caught up so that you can answer these questions. And that's super valuable. In addition, there are also hints to each um, of our uh, questions on the practice. And even afterward, sometimes there's even full step-by-step -step solutions available for your students. This is a learning tool. This is not an assessment tool. And, and we know that when the students are outside your class, it, the more supports we can give them to practice, the better off they're gonna be. One of the exciting things you can use CK12 for is to flip your classroom. So you don't always have to use that um, worksheet, as we say, from the major publisher. You can go flip your classroom by assigning videos to your students to watch the basic foundational parts of those concepts at home. And then maybe they answer some questions or they do one of the interactives like clicks. Because we know our clicks and our sims engage our students. And then when paired with the adaptive practice, they walk into your classroom the next morning with a basic understanding so that during your class with the support of you and the other students around, you can help each one of your students get into deeper learning. So consider redoing the way you are doing your classroom and flipping your classroom with CK12. One of the exciting things that we have developed here at CK12 are our Plix Interactives. And one, for those of you not familiar with them, they stand for Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore. And these are a great way to engage the students on a specific, simple concept. And we've got so many, 1,200 of these on our website in every branch and for every course in middle school and high school uh, for math and science. So we really encourage you to use them as a warm up when the students come in, have that assign the plicks and they know to get on their computer and go do this. And you might have them do it in pairs or individually. You might also use the plicks mid class or as an exit ticket or even as homework. The best thing is there are questions available for each one. And the most, the most interesting thing is there's these open discussion questions. So these are questions that were designed that we do not offer the answers to, but they're designed to promote deeper thinking. And some of these questions link to conversations that students and educators are having in our, plic, in our cafe discussion forums. So there you can make sure that, you know, that students have an opportunity to communicate and discuss ideas from the plics with students from around the world. It's a really exciting thing that we think makes the students engaged in the concept. Another way to learn is using our groundbreaking simulations. We have these in both physics and chemistry, but a lot of other subjects, including earth science and physical science, so many different courses, even many of the math courses can use the simulations. And they're wonderful opportunities for students to not just experience a, an idea and explore it, but to really dig deeply. 
So you can assign a, a simulation and use it as a brief or even a full lesson. You can spend a whole day on a, on a, plix, on a, excuse me, on a simulation. They always begin with a guiding question. And you can use this guiding question as a warm up or as a discussion for your class. Then the students engage in the simulation. There's usually a little opening scenario that's like a video. And then the students go and they get deeper into this by getting to, um, they getting to the beautiful um, like questions and things that we allow them to, to discuss it. Finally, there's further extensions. Where do we see these ideas elsewhere in the world? And it really helps the students figure out how do I, you know, how do I use this? When is this useful? And it really helps engage them. And it, we even offer the opportunity for students to upload their own real world examples of this concept. So take some time out and take a look at our sims because they are a wonderful way of learning. Another great way to learn is using our over 2,500 real world applications. It definitely answers the question, when am I ever going to use this idea? And we have taken this on very, very seriously because we know that this is a great way to start a lesson and engage students because these are ideas and things from their lives. So as a warm up or along the way in your lesson, the whole idea here is these are great models that help the students understand the concept and promote the idea of analyzing what's going on in order to, to deeply understand it. So, you know, if you take a look at many of our lessons in 2.0 have these attached, these are real world applications. And um, shout out to Lindsay who always finds that a difficult thing to say. Um, but RWAs is a, a nicer way to say it that we say internally here at CK12, but they are wonderful ways to learn on CK12. Wow, I'm gonna wipe my brow at this point and Felix, I'm gonna go back to you and see we might have some questions or two at this point. Great, thanks Carl. Um, we do have a couple questions. Um, so I will go ahead and start with the first one which I think we're gonna cover a little later, but uh, Amanda was asking, how do you change the practice quiz to a regular quiz? Okay, so you, when you make a quiz on CK12, you can, go, uh, you can go in and you'll first make the questions and then you'll make the quiz. Now you then after that have the option of attaching it as the practice for a 2.0 lesson, or you can assign the quiz separately as a separate kind of modality. The other thing you might wanna to do too is you can actually embed the quiz at the bottom of the lesson. And these are all things that we cover in, in other um, webinars that we've done. And you'll, there definitely there's customizing adaptive practice or customizing assignments. And that's a great one that I know um, you can go look at in our webinars page right now to find out specifically how to do that. But the, the idea here is you make the quiz up and then you can choose where to surface it. You can attach it as part of the 2.0 lesson. You can actually embed it as part of the 2.0 lesson, or you can assign it separately. Great, thanks, Carl. And we have one more. Uh, actually, I think there's a couple more. Um, so this one's from Taylor. Taylor is asking, are the Sims and videos compatible with iPads? And should students access through their web browser, or is there an app? Great question. So the wonderful thing about CK12, unlike so many other resources out there, is that it's available on any device. We have took a lot, taken a lot of time to go develop these using HTML5. And HTML5 allows any device that has a browser to do this. We used to have separate apps for the Sims and a separate Flexbook app, but what we realized is the best experience possible is always through your browser. So on any browser, excuse me, on any device, you simply open up the browser and you go to ck12.org and you will have the best possible user experience using that browser by going directly to our website. Great, thanks, Carl. Um, I'm gonna, there's a couple more I just wanted to, so there's one that's actually posted in the chat window. Um, just so you guys, just a reminder, please make sure you're posting these in the Q&A window. Um, but the one that was posted in chat from Kim 
She was asking, what is the difference between a Plix interactive and a simulation? All right, that's a great question. So Plix are designed to be very simple interactions with a concept. So I think our founder, Niru, wanted the, um, the whiteboard to come alive to actually be movable and things. So that's where she developed the idea that imagine if we could show something moving to illustrate a simple concept. That's where Plix came out of. Now with simulations, we wanted to simulate a much more complex you know, demonstration of things going on. So for example, you know, reflection or a seesaw where there's multiple variables. So think of Plix as a single variable that the student is interacting and changing versus in the simulations, often there'll be two, three, four, five, even six different variables that the students can change simultaneously to affect the outcome of what's happening. So simulations are a much deeper dive into a real world you know, model versus the plicks tend to focus on a simple level with one variable. Great. And there are a couple more. Um, I can actually answer these two. Um, they're asking about Canvas and Schoology. So one question from Robert was, I use Canvas for my classes. Please suggest the best way to integrate the lessons and activities and assignments with Canvas. And Marie also had a similar question, um, but hers was using it with Schoology. Um, so to answer both of those questions, we do have um, apps available for Canvas and Schoology. And what this will do is it'll allow you to assign um, lessons, quizzes, clicks, sims, um, real world examples, um, a lot of the things that Carl had mentioned to your classes uh, directly in Canvas or Schoology. Um, usually when you're going that route, we say just stick with your LMS, uh, either Canvas or Schoology, and don't worry about creating classes on directly on CK12. Um, so we do have those apps available, and we've, we've covered them in a couple of separate webinars. Um, they're available. Um, but yeah, we, the, the best answer for that is um, to use the apps that we have. Um, you can find them in the App Store for Schoology. And um, for Canvas, there's, uh, there, you can also find it in the, the equivalent app center for, on Canvas. Um, so with that, I think we've, we've answered the questions for now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and keep going and continuing on the topic of the differentiation, learning, and literacy. Thanks, Felix, so much. That was some great questions. You guys did reminder, as Felix said, please type the questions in the Q&A window and um, keep the chat for just kind of a, a sideline conversation. But by putting them in the Q&A window, we can make sure that we, we get an answer for you because we don't monitor the chat window for questions. All right, so as Felix said, we're doing differentiation learning and literacy. So we can create multiple classes to differentiate. And by classes, I mean groups. So we'll talk more about this, but we might want to do like the struggling reader group and call that the purple group. And I might want to do the students who are advanced and I might want to call them the polka dot group or whatever. But the idea is on CK12, you might want to include them. For example, they're all part of period two. But in addition to the period two class, you can put them in another class that's maybe an ability or skills level so that I can make sure that the purple students might have additional supports. Maybe I'm gonna, I've created a scaffolding that they'll use in order to learn this concept that my advanced students don't need. So you can create multiple classes. And then you'll be improving learning and literacy with some of our language and notes options. And we'll take a look at these. These are really powerful. And this is where digital curriculum really excels. And we hear from um, students and even parents from around the world how much they appreciate this, these features of CK-12 because it really gives them access to the content on CK-12. All right, let's dive in. So as I was saying, the purple group, I always like using the purple group, but with the purple group, it might be my struggling readers, um, 
And so maybe they need a more foundational content before they attack an academic text. So I can create a class, as we call them on CK12, but think of it as a mini class or a subclass that you know, they're all part of period two, but then a certain students like Star and Felix I might put in this group and it gives them additional supports that I identify. And everybody's part of a color group, so it, there's no stigma, like they don't know that the purple group has extra supports for struggling readers versus the advanced group, the green group or something, has um, extension activities that you know, the purple group you know, doesn't do. So the idea is, is you can do assignments for specific groups, differentiated groups or classes, but you can also still have classes that are everybody that are assigned to the whole class. So adaptive practice is challenge and support because I mean the whole point of adaptive um, practice is that each student will be identified what's their level and then they will be given content to build from that level upwards. And then along the way they'll be offered content as I've said in the past to fill in the gaps we pause the student that's struggling and we say, you know what, pause here. You might wanna watch this video before you go on because it seems like you're not understanding this. And then of course, after the student finishes with their adaptive practice, we offer reports to both the student and the teacher in order for everybody to understand what the student was able to achieve. You know, what level of questions did the student answer correctly? And this is all automatically done when you assign a lesson as part of a uh, 2.0 Flexbook. So when you assign the lesson, it gives them the lesson, but it also assigns the associated practice. And this is really important because we've made your life easier by packaging those together as the learning process. One of the most exciting things that I love to talk about these days are our inline questions. These are questions that the students answer during a lesson, not at the end. They get immediate feedback on their answers, which can include suggestions of what they did incorrectly. Around to each one of my students as they struggle at, at different points in my lesson, and I can't give them the feedback that they need in order to get over that hurdle. And the benefit of these inline questions is that's exactly what these inline questions do. When, when Felix gets to this question here, compute the, the price per roll of spongy paper towels, and he thinks it's more expensive by 24 cents per roll, not only does it say that's not right, but it says you didn't divide the price by the number of rolls to get the unit price of paper towels. And I think this is really important because it gives really important feedback and this is what the student needs. And you can't do that multiple times during a period for each one of your students. So, you know, take a look at these and I, I just think they're, in the, they're so exciting because this is a great way to make your lessons interactive, but also to kind of check in multiple times the way that, you know, we like to do as good, good educators, but we can't do this with all of our students multiple times. And then if, if it's a lesson that you've written and we don't have any provided inline questions, one of the greatest activities you can create is to have some of your advanced students write what these inline questions might be, including the feedback on the wrong answer. So they came up with, well, what would be the common mistakes and give me those answers and then tell the, the students and they can build this right on CK12 and it's super easy for you to embed that into your lesson. And you can do this whether it's math, science, world history, economics, anything, you can have advanced students do that. And you talk about creating a wonderful learning opportunity for those students when they have to think deeply about that concept. And when you do that, please reach out to us at jumpstart at ck12.org and show us some great examples that your students have um, created. And we'd love to show these to other people because we think this is a really powerful way of using CK12's um, interactive platform. Simulations are obviously a great thing to try to incorporate as we've talked about into your lessons. Um, they challenge and support your students. So there are challenge questions and, you know, have your students sketch predictions with the graphs turned off. What do you think the graph's gonna look like based on this scenario? And then they do a sample graph. 
and, and I've seen teachers do this in class and it's super powerful and it really gets the students thinking deeply about this concept. And then we've got the challenge me here and over here we've got settings that will offer um, you know, the, the ability to shut off the um, graphs. And then we have tutorials, a teacher walkthrough, in case you're not familiar with this concept, hear from another teacher how they've used this in their classroom. Of course, we have links to our concept pages and then even more um, information on the information icon. So we, these are obviously very rich resources and don't be, you know, don't be put off that there's, you know, that they are so rich. It is, we've tried to make it easy for you to understand how to do this. All right, and then we have obviously worksheets that will um, help you and they're, they're electronic and also PDF companion worksheets. Um, another thing that we offer is there are translations into a variety of other languages that teachers have volunteered to translate our simulations into other languages. And you'll find languages like Portuguese there for Brazil and Portugal and Korean and German. And so this is, this is an area that we've been able to really offer a lot of great kind of local language support. Um, you can also customize your own slider questions, meaning that you can set up different scenarios and have the students go try to get specific answers based on that. And finally, um, the students here um, have the ability to think about different science common misconceptions, like particular particles of solid have no motion. So there's a related sim called building bridges to do this. So sims have can really help students address misconceptions. Our Plix Interactives coming up once again is a great learning resource. Remember that they have um, even hints with all of our questions. They have at least five questions for every Plix and there's hints written by real teachers and then of course the open-ended um, discussion questions at the end. Um, the idea here too is that you've got links to the concept pages to keep on learning or in case the student's not understanding. And then you can explore the interactive and discuss it with others. We know that math is a language and needs to be discussed. So, and even science too, that you've got to be able to talk these things through to really deeply understand them. So that we offer you all of that as part of the PLIX. And next we have um, uh, the literacy section coming up. And we're gonna start out by hearing from a CK12 teacher who uses the digital highlighting feature on CK12 to help her students process academic texts. A student has more than one learning model, learns through multiple modalities. Um, a feature that CK12 provides is the highlighting with different colors. So, I'm able to not only emphasize a key point, but I'm able to assign it to a specific color that can also trigger um, another, maybe another memory for them. Great, thanks so much, Anna. As Anna was saying, we've got our highlighting and annotating. And this is where it just, I, I saw Anna's classroom, the woman that was just speaking there, and she trained her students, they're gonna do all their topic sentence highlighting in one color and all supporting facts in another. And of course, then in the Flexbook 2.0 platform, all of these notes then are presented um, in the toolbar on the right-hand side. And this is really powerful to helping her students and a lot of her students are second language learners. And so they need supports and she's offering it using the CK12 2.0 platform. Because highlighting is synthesizing and we teach our students to talk to the text by interacting with it. And the summary on the right is a great way to help her students uh, prepare for quizzes and tests. So take a look at this. And another great thing is you might have your students write a three sentence summary of what this lesson was about in their own words. And this turns out to be a really powerful moment for the students to be able to condense their learning down to three sentences and present it as you know, part of their interpretation of the lesson. So have fun with this one. And I think you'll see that the students um, really begin to understand lessons more deeply using tools provided by CK12. 
translation is a big thing. And when you have content in lessons on CK12, whether that's from CK12 and we've developed it, or it's content that you've written, we um, have the power of Google Translate behind our lessons. And if you go to the bottom of the CK12 pages, you're gonna find the option to translate into any of the CK12 lessons, uh, excuse me, into the Google languages. And this, I can tell you I speak Spanish and the Spanish in the last five years has gotten so good. It's not just a, oh, I think I get what they're saying. It's a fairly good deep translation and they've crowdsourced a lot of it. And the end result is it's wonderful. Um, not all languages are fully developed. I've heard the Arabic isn't fantastic. Um, and we were speaking with somebody the other day um, uh, from Kazakhstan, and they were saying that it wasn't a great translation, but so many of the um, languages are have really developed nicely on CK12. I was super pleased when last year they introduced Chichewa, which is another language that I happen to speak because I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Malawi, Africa, and, um, and I, I love seeing stuff in, in Chichewa there. Um, but the idea here is you could send home a copy of your book that you're using on CK12 and you could already have the language selected. So you could send home a version of your book in Spanish, translated by Google to your parents and say, engage in what your students are learning. Come join, you know, and be a part of this and talk about it at your dining room table. And I think, you know, I've also seen where the students have translated version on their phone and they're looking at their Chromebook in the English academic language. And so they're building vocabulary instantly as they're going from their phone to the lesson on their computer. So try this out with your students and um, really kind of, I think, use this resource. I hear, you know, from so many teachers that this is the one thing that blows people away and that is when the student doesn't have any academic language in English to be able to use this feature and build on what they know in their home language in order to access the content, which we know is so the, the goal here. Um, not only can you send home copies of you know, CK12 in a foreign language, but of course all parents wanna be connected with their kids' curriculum. So you can send links to the concept pages, send a link to the Flexbook that you're using, whether you've customized it or not. And as I mentioned, it's easy to support the parents' home. All right, we have um, uh, got another video here. And this time it's from El Paso Independent School District in Texas. And Cynthia talks about the power of CK-12's translate feature. I met a parent who was struggling with um, supporting his daughter um, because he did not speak English very well. So I, sh I brought up the CK-12 on my iPad. I quickly showed him how he can change the language and he was nearly in tears and he felt just so excited that now that he could help his daughter, which was emotional for me too, knowing that this is what CK-12 is about. This is what we want our parents, our language learners, no matter where they come from, no matter what language they speak, they need to find a place in our classroom and CK-12 helps us to do that. Awesome, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Carl. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and, and take a quick second to answer some questions. Um, I see we have one from Matthew, and Matthew is asking about worksheets and SIMS. Um, specifically, how do we access the worksheets? I am using the SIMS and I have not found the worksheets. Sorry about that, my mute button kept flying around the screen. Um, yeah, so when you get to um, the SIM, I think I can go live here if we have a few more questions that you need me to um, demonstrate. Um, you should see my screen live now. And let's go over to the simulations. And let's just pick a random, I like the, this, this one's, I love this bobsled one. So, um, You've got, you know, here's the sim and it's got the, you know, the, this is the nice interactive area here. We've got the tutorial here, as I mentioned, you know, and you can watch that full screen, but we've got some three dots over here, which means there's more stuff there. And one of them is worksheet right there. So this is how you access the worksheet on the simulation is just go to that kind of extra content. And you can see, you can also, um, 
get an embed code if you want to embed this sim inside your CK12 lesson, and you can even share it with your classes. And obviously over here, you can assign it. So there's lots that you can do with the sim, including download the worksheet. Great, thank you, Carl. Um, we have another question. Um, this one is regarding practice and quiz, um, which I think we're actually gonna cover coming up. But Amanda was asking, how do you change the practice quiz to a regular quiz? So I think I understand the question if it's a quiz that you've attached to. So let, let's go here now. Let's see if I have in my library here a uh, flex book that doesn't have practice attached. I, my guess is, let's see, maybe this one doesn't. Um, so once again, if you have a lesson that's never had practice attached to it, and I'm not sure we're going to find one here, but maybe we will. Um, yeah, so this one still has it. But down here, if there's no practice attached, that's when you can attach a quiz that represents the, the practice. And remember, you would do this in a case when you don't like the practices there, or you want to um, have this be, it, it, there are no, CK12 doesn't have any questions of our 150,000 questions in math and science, maybe because you teach history, there are no questions there. So you can create it there, but it's still a quiz. So you'll create the quiz first and you do that, remember, by going up here, I'm gonna go to my library and you're gonna create a new quiz here. So it will always be a quiz and you can decide to attach that quiz to the practice of it with any lesson in Flexbook 2.0, or you can have it separate. So it's kind of up to you what you want to do. Great, thanks, Carl. Um, so I think that was the last question there. So we're gonna go ahead and keep it rolling um, to our final topic, which is assessment, progress, and remediation. All right, I think we finally got back. It's a little confusing. Um, Felix just said assessment progress and remediation. And I'm gonna catch up here. So many CK12 resources are designed um, with learning in mind. For example, our simulations, inline questions, and Plix interactives are meant to help students learn. With this in mind, we provide direct feedback and offer hints and other supports. These modalities give complete and incomplete scores when you assign them. If you want to see how students are doing on questions, we recommend that you use the adaptive practice and quizzes to see student progress. So let's get into this now. And we have learning versus assessment. So remember, we often just do learning. Like we spend a lot of time on a learning and a lot of CK 12 resources are not, um, are not meant for assessment. You can create a separate quiz and indeed this will actually um, I'll give you a score like a summative score that you can use. But much of what we do on CK 12 is just help your students learn. Um, pre and post test are great examples of that summative idea where you might have a pretest that you create using our quiz maker and you can give that as a pretest, but you can also give it as a post test and you can assess their starting knowledge and then use these two scores and, and, and you know, answers on those quizzes to show the growth. Remember, quizzes um, can also be attached in Flexbook 2.0. So um, you can customize a, dis, a, you know, a existing practice, or you can put in a quiz that you've already made. And while this removes the practice that automatically adapts to student performance, this is one way you can tailor your lessons with your own assignments, and more specifically, your own questions. CK12 reports not only show completion for learning modalities and scores towards a goal of 10 correct for practice and the percentage correct for quizzes, they give you access to the same report students see for practice and quizzes. And with our heat map, you'll see that you can at a glance see which one of my students are struggling um, as they progress through um, the CK12 platform. 
our insights are one of the most powerful things of the, the 2.0 platform. And here, each one of the students' progress is tracked. For example, they are, it's shared how much time they spent on the lesson and then kind of their practice skill level. Like, are they at mastery yet? Are they proficient? This student is still exploring after spending five minutes. And even there's a histogram off to the side here, which shows you where did they spend time on this lesson. And it'll show you, for example, did they watch the video? Or, you know, did they do the interactive? And this is great information to help you serve your students better. Finally, remediation happens through recommendations. And, you know, our, our science material is rich with good content and questions. And we've now begun the process of mapping so we can identify maybe the student doesn't understand this is where they're struggling here. And I can offer some interventions or, you know, the platform can to really address where the student is struggling. So you can see here, um, it's, it's going to be a great way to offer insights is our Flexbook 2.0 platform. All right, well, I think we're, we're just about wrapping up here. So Felix, we're gonna move along here and we'll answer some questions after you wrap this up in case any of our people, I know we have people in Europe that it's, it's quite late right now. And so we will say um, after we wrap this up, um, good night to them, but we will stay on as always to answer your questions. Um, so Felix, let's go and talk about future webinars. Yes. All right. So coming up, um, we have two more webinars that on the schedule for March. Um, CK12's Flexbooks 2.0 platform is on Monday, March 23rd at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Then we have Customizing Flexbooks, which is scheduled for Monday, March 30th at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, you can sign up for both of these webinars at www.ck12.org slash webinars. And then another uh, quick CEP reminder. Um, so like the two upcoming webinars, this webinar is one of the core sessions for the CK12 Certified Educator Program, uh, CEP. If you're brand new to the Certified Educator Program and would like more information on how to get started, um, now that you have one or more webinars under your belt, please go to www.ck12.org slash certified and click register. Another thing we would love is we would love to receive your feedback on our webinars as we're always looking to improve them. If you have two or three minutes, please go to um, www.tinyurl.com slash ck12 feedback 1920 and fill out a short survey to let us know how we're doing and how we can improve. All right, so again, just wanna thank you guys for joining us today. Um, let me assure you that we'll continue to be supported by our team. You will be continued to be supported by our team at CK12. Um, we're definitely happy to help you, so send us an email anytime to support at ck12.org. And please do not forget to let your social networks know about CK12 and your participation in our program. We're on all socials as CK12 Foundation, or you can hashtag CK12 Certified. And with that, that's it for today's core programming. But as promised, we will stay on for any additional questions you would like to ask our team. Carl. All right, so Felix, the first question I think you can answer is, is the histogram and student feedback visible even if we're using CK12 through Canvas? The, yes, so the histogram was, is available in Canvas. In can, sorry, I'm, I had blown a space out. Um, in Canvas, yes, it is available. Um, and the way to get to, get to that is, uh, as you're creating the assignments in Canvas, it'll once you create them from uh, the CK12 assignments in Canvas, it's going to show up in your assignments under your class as its own like link or uh, material. When you click on that, it's going to take you into the assignment, and it'll drop you like right onto the the Flexbook 2.0 lesson. Um, within the lesson, there's an option for a, a toolbar, so you'll see it kind of on the right side. If you click on that and you'll see an option to view insights, 
there you'll be able to see uh, the insights that Carl had mentioned. And then if you click on the students, you'll actually see uh, the histograms. Um, but yes, they are available in Canvas. They are not currently uh, um, accessible through Schoology. Um, there's a limitation that we're, we're kind of trying to work around um, within Schoology that they do not allow us to send back a, sort of like a report URL. Um, but we're working on getting that sorted out. Well, Felix, thanks so much. And, and interestingly enough, it's, that's exactly the type of thing Felix works on day in and day out around here is our beautiful integrations with um, LMS systems like Canvas and Schoology. So you asked the right person on that one. Well, folks, we are out of questions and out of time. And so we really want to say a big thank you um, to Felix for stepping in today and um, to everyone out there for joining us. Remember, please contact us at jumpstart at ck12.org. Share your successes with us. Share your, um, your challenges. And then please share how you're using CK12 and what it's great for on your social media networks. Alrighty, folks, from all of us here in the Palo Alto studios, we say have a great day and uh, keep using CK12. Take care.